Good evening, people. Watch, whoops, watch them at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day. Excuse me, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's why we're saved, how we're saved, and why we're kept saved. It's only through his shed blood, not of ourselves, not of works. Works has nothing to do with salvation. I'll say it again, and I'll, I'll say it until the cows come home. Works has nothing to do with salvation. It has everything to do with the shed blood of Jesus Christ for all of our sins, past, present, and future. How do you, it is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe, remember, it is grace through faith, which is believing. Whoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready, which again is going to happen at any time, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, if you let him. That's what he does. He's your best friend. I always say that. Now, there's a lot of focus about 2030. Lots of stuff about 2030. This article actually came out yesterday. It's on the Defender. It came out yesterday. Now, everything, one, everything has to be set up by 2030. Right? Everything has to be set up by 2030. Now, again, if you subtract 2030 from 2023, you get seven years. So they're saying, I mean, the world is saying they want everything set up by 2030. Again, but listen to this. New York, New York, liberal New York is going to track residents' food purchases and place caps, caps on meat. Served by public institutions. Now, New York City will begin tracking the carbon footprint of household food consumption and putting caps on how much red meat can be served in public inst institutions as part of a sweeping initiative to achieve a 33%. Isn't that number interesting? 33% carbon emissions from food by 2030. We're seeing what I'm, I, I've said this before, and you know what, it, it baffles me. <laughs> it, it, it really just irritates me that people get on YouTube and do videos about, oh, we have to see the Antichrist. We have to go through this before the rapture could even happen. What more do you have to go through? I mean, it's in his word. We are about to leave here. We're, when we see stuff like this, articles like this, it's a precursor to what is coming. If this is a precursor, if we're seeing a precursor right now, how much worse is it going to be during the tribulation? You won't see anybody doing videos during the tribulation about salvation. I can guarantee you that unless they have a death wish. That's the truth. There is not going to be any of that going on in the tribulation. As a matter of fact, people probably won't even have a computer. And those that do, it will be underground. Way underground. Hidden. Period. This goes on to say Mayor Eric Adams and representatives from the Mayor's Office of Food Policy and Mayor's Office of Climate and Environmental Justice announced the new programs last month at a Brooklyn Culinary Center ran by the New York City Health and Hospitals. At the event, the, mayor, uh, the Mayor's Office 
of environmental justice shared a new chart to be included in the city's annual greenhouse gas inventory that publicly tracks the carbon footprint created by household food consumption. So in other words, they're going to track everything you're doing, including what you eat. This is why now is the time for salvation, because salvation and your faith and trust in Jesus Christ is your only way out. You can call it an escape. You can call, oh, you all just want to leave and not want to go through anything. Well, duh, we didn't say it. God said it in his word. If you got a problem with it, I suggest you take it up with God. Because he promised us the rapture. And he promised us a crown for those who love his appearing. So if you got a problem with the rapture and those who say stupid stuff like that, they have a problem with the rapture. Because it is stupid that comes out of their mouth that says, oh, you just want to escape. You just don't want to go through. People have gone through hell and they're going through hell on this earth right now. Christians. And God, if they want to lean on the promises of God that they will escape out of here with the rapture, there is nothing wrong with that. And yes, it is an escape. <laughs> Let me stop right there. Now I'm on a roll. Sorry. Well, no, I'm not sorry. Let's just look at, again... <laughs> Let's just look at, let me get the King James out. Let me look at, because I'm a King James only person. Let's look at Revelation again. Revelation, one of my favorite verses. Revelation was the first book in the Bible I read when I got saved. And everybody said, don't read that. Don't read that. I read it. I was fascinated. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. All the world. To try them that dwell upon the earth. I will keep you from that. Not put you through that. Not see to it that you go through it. Not see to it that you, you know, you go through and come out. I'll protect you. No, I will keep you from. I will snatch you out of here. Okay? Please. You want to go through hell on this earth and don't and you're not saved and you talk about Christians who believe in the rapture, you go ahead. Because hell you will go through on this earth if you're not saved. Will you get saved during the tribulation? Yeah, but you'll die for it. Just saying. This goes on to say the city has already produced emissions data from energy use. Transportation and waste is part of an annual inventory. But the addition of household food consumption data is part of a partnership that London and New York, London and New York launched with American Express. C40 cities and Eco Data Lab. Commissioner Rohit Agarwala, is that the name? or aggravation, <laughs> so to speak, from the New York City Department of Environmental Protection announced at the event. He said the inventory also will measure greenhouse gas pollution from the production and consumption of other consumer goods, like apparel. Hmm. Whether or not those items are made in New York City. It also tracks emissions tied to services like air travel and healthcare. This is pathetic, but this is what's coming. This is what's coming. And like I said, and like I keep saying, we're seeing a precursor to what is coming. We are not in the tribulation period right now. If we were, I wouldn't be doing videos because I wouldn't have a computer. Think about it. Duh. I probably, I would be in heaven. Just saying, with the Lord 
at the marriage supper of the Lamb, not having to worry about doing dinners for anyone anymore. So, I'm going to link this article in the description box because it's interesting to read. They want all this in, they, the report assesses a consumption-based emission C40 cities across the world. Across the world, produced by food, clothing, transportation, building, infrastructure, and household appliances, and calls for those emissions to be halved by 2030. You can read this for yourself. It's interesting. So, I will be back later. Thank you for your support, everybody who supports this. This is a ministry, and it's a full-time ministry for me. Because I'm always watching stuff. And I always try to get on here and report it before. <laughs> well, the lamestream media gets a hold of it. Because they probably, some of this stuff they don't even know. They, don't, they won't even report. But anyway, that's okay. Love you all. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.